It is always a great joy and privilege to be able to see new believers in Jesus Christ follow the Lord in believers' baptism. From the book of Acts, Peter preached on the day of Pentecost. It, the Bible says that people were convicted. They were cut to the heart with the message. And he, he preached to them, you need to repent. And if you've repented, then you need to be baptized. And so it says in verse 37 of Acts chapter 2, Now when they heard this, this message, they were cut to the heart. And they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, Repent. And let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Verse 41 says, Then those who gladly received His word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. You imagine how tired their backs must have been after the end of that day of baptizing. Person after person. The Bible teaches that obedience is not, uh, that, that baptism is not salvation. Baptism is a step of obedience. It's a picture. It's, a, it's an important picture. The picture is best represented by immersion, which is what that word means, baptize. The Greek word means to dip, to overwhelm, to make fully wet. So that's why we use a tank. The Bible teaches that it's always after conversion. I've had people ask me before, well, would you baptize my baby? Would you baptize my child? The condition is, is that child must be able to make a confession of faith. They have to proclaim, I have come to faith in Jesus Christ and I want to obey the Lord Jesus. Upon that public confession of faith, then we go through the waters of baptism. Because this water is just water. There's only one thing sufficient to wash away sin, and it is the blood of Jesus Christ. This water or water in any other building, any, any other establishment or church, it will merely make you wet. So if someone enters these waters and they have not been saved, they've not been born again, they will leave a wet sinner who needs to be born again. So we're very careful. And when we come to the waters of baptism, it's a picture. I've used this analogy before, the wedding ring. If I take the wedding ring off, I don't cease to be married. But I wear this wedding ring because it publicly identifies me with Ginger. I belong to her. And when someone follows the Lord in baptism, that's what they're saying. I belong to Jesus Christ. He is my Lord and... I belong to this body. I am at one with this fellowship of believers. And we have joined together. God has brought us together to reach the world for Jesus Christ. So that's why we're here today. So scripture right there, Matthew 28, 19. Tell us exactly what. You have it up there, Joe? I can't see it. There it is. <laughs> because Jesus said, go, baptize, teach. Today, we are simply being obedient and we rejoice in doing.